Good evening. I'm Tom Williams, the Artistic Director of the Clifton International Festival of Music, and I'm delighted to be joined now by David Bednell, one of our artists for the week. Uh, good evening, David. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to start by talking about your concert on the Friday night, The Battle of the Organs, with Malcolm Archer. Now, a lot of people in the West Country will know that you and Malcolm uh, go way back. What would it be like to work with him again? I'm very much looking forward to it. It will actually be the first time we've worked together in Bristol. Uh, we've worked uh, together for many years now. We first met in Wells uh, when he was director of music there. And um, following that, following his move to St Paul's and Winchester, we've kept the musical fusion going. Uh, we've run a summer course every year in France, and it's on those that we've um, sort of established an annual event of a concert based largely around improvisation in which we take it in turns. And there's a kind of interaction between us in which, I suppose in the best possible way, a kind of not exactly friendly competitiveness, but um, the inspiration of having someone working alongside you always helps to spur you on and you'll often have the exciting experience of picking up an idea from someone else and then taking it in your, your own direction. So um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Let's stay with the improvisation idea for a little while and, and just talk about that. What does that actually mean? I mean, we know what the definition of the word is, but how does that work in practice when it comes to having an idea and, and making an improvisation work on the organ? It's a very interesting question, um, the art of improvisation. I mean, how much of it is improvised, if you like? And it's interesting, there are two quotations by Duke Ellington and by Jean Langlais, a great French improviser, uh, which are almost identical in their content, and both say um, essentially that improvisation cannot be improvised. Improvisation must, if you like, be planned, at least to a large extent. And I think that when one is improvising, the idea is always to try and um, create the illusion, possibly, of a printed piece that one might actually have learned. And in fact, um, another great improviser of the 20th century was Pierre Cochereau, organist in Notre Dame, and he actually referred to it as the illusionist's art. So this idea that from a, a seed of an idea, you try and build a piece um, which actually sounds like a through composed work. So it's composition, essentially. It's, it's really a form of instant composition, yes. Uh, the difference being, I suppose, that with composition, one um, slaves over individual bars, um, often for weeks at a time to get something absolutely right. In improvisation, it is lost to the ether. The moment it's happened, it's gone. Um, and you can either return to that idea or leave it as a, a discarded thing that didn't quite work. And you're always told that if you play a wrong note in improvisation, make sure you do it again later, which can work, or you simply sound like you've played two wrong notes. But um, you're certainly doing it on the hoof. There's no, there's no eraser, if you like. You've got to keep going forward. So whatever happened, the motion is always forward. And I think that's the main area difference from composition in that you don't have the recourse to if you like the rubber and being able to go back, it is out there immediately. But I would say really it is a form of instant composition when it's done properly. It is really a piece being composed on the spur of the moment. And it's telling within that that many of the great composers um, were famous improvisers. Uh, J.S. Bach, for instance, the great preludes and fugues we know and love, were um, almost certainly improvised, or at least he would improvise works of that quality, which is quite astounding when we examine the intricacies of those works to imagine that they would have been improvised. And in um, nearer to our current time, Stravinsky and Ratmaninoff were also in the as being improvisers as well. So, on the 28th of June at the festival concert, Battle of the Organs, um, we'll hear you improvise not only on the great Riga organ here at the cathedral, but on the uh, electronic organ upstairs in the balcony. Um, how's that going to work? I mean, surely improvising on one organ is going to be difficult enough, but with the two of you on, on separate organs, uh, how might that play out? Uh, it may very well not work. Well, I hope that it will. Um, it's very, very much, I think we will see what happens really. We'll have a rehearsal time, I think, work out roughly what we're going to do. And when we've done um, improvisations before, there is always a plan. Um, I think otherwise there is um, 
often can simply be chaos. So there's a reasonably um, tight game plan, I suppose, if you like. I suppose much like um, one may have a strategy in a, a rugby game, for example, but I mean, you need to be able to quickly deviate from the model um, should it be necessary or things change or an idea takes you. But there's a plan we stick to, uh, which is usually as simple as who's going to do what and the order of the movements or say the variations if we're improvising on a theme and what that will be. And that really is the skeleton around which everything else is based for the piece. So on the 28th we've got an added element uh, to the performance in that you and Mark will not only be improvising on themes which you've prepared to some extent, um, but you'll have to play a theme submitted by our live audience. Um, the theme of course um, you'll have no prior knowledge of it and, and the planning will be far more difficult to achieve I suppose. How do you go through that process of semi-composition when you don't know what's coming up? I would think it's fair to say there are certain formulas and th certain strategies which work and pretty much the same I suppose if you look at you know the great bark ponies and feeds there are certain um, formulas he uses um, in which you know the, it's a game plan that works, it's effective, it builds to a natural climax. And something we're almost certainly doing is a set of variations uh, which the theme can be subjected to. And a lot will depend really on the type of theme we're offered. There are certain themes which lend themselves less easily to improvisation, whereas other themes upon which it's um, possible to do an almost endless variety of things. So um, there will be certainly, I would imagine, a, a game plan of what we're going to do into which we will then and then the materials at our disposal really. So we've got a snippet of a theme uh, now and, and you'll improvise on it a little bit later. Tell us a little bit about this theme. Indeed, this is the wonderful Pentecost hymn, Venecreatus Spiritus, which is a wonderful theme upon which to improvise.